is I, Derek from Tomcat Gas Training, and welcome to part two on using these things. Anyway, if you've not seen part one on how to use a bending spring on 15 milli copper, you need to go and check that one first because it gives you all the preparation you require for getting this bending spring ready for bending tube. But this one we're going to be doing is 22 millimeters. But before we get into this video, please could you take some time to subscribe because it helps the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. I've no clue at the moment. And don't forget to give me that thumbs up and leave a constructive comment down below. But that's enough waffling and messing around. So let's get on with it with this part two on how to bend 22 millimeter copper tube using a bending spring. So I've called back four pipe diameters. So 60 mil that way and I've gone forward. Two pipe diameters, so I've gone 30 mil that way. You end up as a uh, plumber or a gas engineer or whatever with very flat kneecaps with original knees that you use a spring lock. So then I'm going to use a bit of a knee there to make up the first bend point. Now I'm evenly pulling with both hands gently. So far we've got that. A ripple so far. If you've seen part one, you've seen you have to have uh, markings for your bending radius. So I have measured 400 mil because this is centre wrist pipe. 400 mil from this measured end to my centre point. So number one here is my centre of bend from centre to end. Now I've gone back four pipe diameters. So this is 22 mil. So four times 22 is 88 mil. So I've gone back to 88. And I've gone forward two pipe diameters, so I've gone forward 44 mil. So this is where I'm going to bend my 90 degree within those marks. But if you've ever tried to bend 22 millimeter tube this day and age, you'll find it crinkles dead easy. Does it on with your benders? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a trick. What well, we only used to use it on uh, 28 mil when I was an apprentice because the pipe was a lot thicker than and it's called annealing. So basically what annealing is going to do is I'm going to use my blow lamp and I'm going to heat up between these sections here to make the copper softer. So I'm going to heat it till it becomes a cherry red and then this is a big bucket of uh, water. I'm going to cool it instantly so then that will make the copper softer for me to be able to bend it, hopefully. So first thing I need to do is anneal it. Now obviously I don't want to be burning my fingers, so I'm going to slide it through here. And obviously this is a plastic bucket. So I'm going to keep my heat within there and hopefully it won't travel across here and melt the handles. It should do. Anyway, let's have a go. So basically, if you can hear me, I'm just going to start by heating up at number two and work my way down to number three. And I'm going to keep turning it as I am heating it. This is quite a long process, but you can see what I'm doing. So I'll speed this section up for you. Okay, so hopefully you saw that went cherry red. So I've got a rag here. I'm just going to put it straight over the pipe and cool it instantly. Remember, this is absolutely red hot. As you can see, the steam coming up. Now, you could actually leave it to go cold on its own, but... Uh, 
I haven't got time for that. And it did actually get a little bit warm, but didn't melt my bucket, thank God. So, the pipe is now prepared. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to dry it off and I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to polish it up so you can still see where I've annealed it. I'm going to re-put my marks on so it's going to help you see when I'm bending. Now, you can see I've remarked my marks at one, two, three, after I've cooled it down from annealing. Now, again, if you'd seen part one, you'll see why we need this wire on the on the spring. Now, one of the things what does worry me about this cheapo spring is, hmm, when I'm pulling that, is it going to come out? But we'll see anyway. So, first thing I need to do is get the middle of my spring in the middle of my number one and mark it with my wire. So again, I can bend the wire down. I can place it <laughs> into there and I can just tap it down. Till it comes to my mark. Now, this is my number two mark and like I say in, in, in part one, I, you start your bend from there and you gradually move yourself around. So I'm going to bend this around my knee, if you haven't seen part one, I'm going to put it on just underneath my kneecap. And you start at two, not one. One is the centre of your bend, and I'm going to gradually pull it between marks two and three. Now then, this is going to be an even pull. So I start right on the end there, right on the corner of my knee there, and I can start to pull and gradually bend the pipe so you can see the first pull just starting to form the bend and I'm going to move along the bending point evenly pulling with both hands don't try and pull it really hard because you'll just crinkle the pipe and you'll get the spring stuck so uh, just go in between the marks and start to bend the copper now, what the spring does is, it supports the wall of the copper and stops the copper crushing. But, uh, we'll see how this cheap spring does. So I'm just gradually pulling it around my bending point. I can hear the spring cracking, can you? Just gradually pulling it around. So we've got to there and you can just see where it's rippling because the spring has stretched massively. Not good these cheap springs from B and Q. So even annealing hasn't really helped that out. Now this is a lot harder to do than 15mm, obviously. <laughs> that is the spring, not my shoulders. So you can see it's starting to ripple quite badly. Well, it is for me anyway. Can you see that? And you can see where the spring has opened up massively. So if I'd had a decent spring, this would have worked perfectly. Now we're getting there. You can see we're starting to form the 90 degree bend. And you can see doing using a spring, you can't be a weakling. You want to try bending 35mm pipe. Oh my word. Now that was an art form. So, looks like we've got 90 degrees. Let's just try the square on it. I don't know whether you can see this. So it's not it's not far off, but I want to bend it slightly over so I can get this spring out. So again, evenly pulling. So you should be able to see now that's quite far over. So what I need to do now is just pull it back a little bit, back to 90 degrees. 
Fingers crossed, we can pull this rubbish spring out. Oh my word. How easy was that? Anyway, so you can see now I've pulled a nice 90 degree bend in this 22 mil pipe. It is slightly rippled, but that's because when the spring's bending, it's actually opening out too much. This needs to be a lot firmer than that, like a lot stiffer. My old bending springs used to stay up the 22 mil ones because they were that stiff. But anyway, we did still manage to bend 90 degrees. Now, are we 400 from the end of there to the centre of there? Let's go find out. So you can see I've got my set square set up. So let's put it on the edge. And you can clearly see there, we're bang on 400 millimetres to the end of our pipe. And you can see the bend is perfectly formed in our bending radius. And you can now see, you can hardly see any ripples. You can feel them slightly. But again, if anybody brought that to me under assessment, how could I fail that? So that is the perfect 90 degree bend, bent with a bending spring in 22 mil copper tube. And that is the end of this video on how to bend 22 millimeter copper tube to 90 degrees with a bending spring. If you haven't seen how to do 50 millimeters with a bending spring in part one, check that out. So if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because I'm not sure when I'm releasing videos. Anyway, all I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, don't forget part one on 15mm, and I'll catch you on the next one guys. Cheers.